the legendary, the man, the myth, the legend, Bradley. Welcome to the show, brother. Good to see you again. And if I was lucky enough to be invited to this show, then I'm lucky as the freaking, I'm lucky, my brother. I appreciate you. <laughs> Dude, man, I'm excited to talk to you again. I had so much fun on your show. I got so much feedback just around our conversation. People loved it and reached out and it was awesome. And um, yeah, bro, I, I love what you do. I value what you do. You're, you're straight up about everything. No bullshit. And um, yeah, I just want to like, I want the, the audience that may not know much about you, you know, to learn more about, you know, how you became who you are, man, because it's not easy. We see this, this handsome fella and the speaking on stages and putting out content. We think that he's always had it figured out, but I know you've gone through a lot of shit and um, I'm excited to dive into it, bro. So um, where I want to start is I saw you were at this event, this dope event this last week, Driven it was called, right? Yep. Talk us, talk us about what that was like and what was that event about, man? What were you, what were you speaking about? Well, the Driven event is my boy, Albert Preciado and his wife, Sylvia. Uh, you know, they're, they're in the mortgage industry, real estate industry, and they started it about five years ago and it's taken off. They, they had an unbelievable lineup. Andy Frisella, Ed Milet, Tom Bilyeu, Jesse Itzler, Cindy Eckert, um, Les Brown, and the list goes on and on. And then, of course, yours truly. So, so my talk, because, again, I don't really have a speech, Lance. I don't speak. Yeah. You know, to me, when you speak, like to me, a professional speaker, if you see them on a Monday and you see them on a Friday, it's the same talk. Yeah. It's the same speech. They, they even pause at the exact same time. They have the same jokes. It's rehearsed. I don't do that. I talk. I'm more like Gary Vee when it comes to speeches because I just, I just talk. So, so when someone says, what'd you talk about? I can tell you what I talked about. I can't tell you everything I said. I talked about the, the, the four life lessons that, that took me a long time to learn. Um, and then I talked about what I call the kill sets, which are the four things that you need to know if you want to kill it in life. Make seven, eight figures, no matter whether it's for yourself or someone else. You want to be high paid. You need these four skill sets that I call kill sets. And I did that by just telling a few stories here and there. Mm. And then at the end, you know, I talked about how, how luck is a part of it, man. You know, you know, I'm a lucky dude, bro. You know, I, luck plays a role. Right. And, and I think, you know, we can make ourselves luckier, you know, with what we do, where we go, who we hang with, you know, being prepared, being ready when opportunity knocks, et cetera, et cetera. Being aware of what opportunity looks like, not being afraid to take chances. It goes on and on. So that's what I talked about. Yeah. I saw as well, one of your posts, you were talking about, uh, I thought it was funny because people can't really tell a joke in the comment section. You were talking about having, what is it? Seven kids with 10 women or something. And people just didn't understand the joke. And uh, I thought it was pretty funny because, you know, that's part of what I, what I like about you is your ability to kind of like joke around about shit. And, you know, even though it's challenging, you're able to look at it with a better perspective and you're talking about perspective and how important that is because like we even talked about when we were, when you're on my, when I was on your show, you know, you said you look at adversity, you don't even look at it. You look at it as a, like an opportunity as, and it's really your perspective of how that situation is and how you react and walk us through a little bit more around your perspective and why someone like you that has gone through a lot of different shit, a lot of different layers, how perspective matters and why some people don't have that same perspective. Well, I learned to have the perspective over time, but perspective matters because, you know, you can look at something from a different angle and see a different thing. You know, that's, yeah. that's what perspective is all about. So there was two kids, you know, one rich, one poor, the rich kid, they put him in a room full of shit, came back, pissed off, put a poor kid in a room full of shit, came back happy as hell, throwing it around. They asked the rich kid, what's the problem? He says, you put me in a room full of shit. What do you think? Mm. Asked the poor kid, what are you so happy about? He said, well, with all this shit, there has to be a pony in here somewhere. So same situation, you know, different perspective, different attitude, different outcome, different, you know, viewpoint. So 
it's just a choice when it boils down to it. And I developed that choice over years of realizing when we wake up in the morning, Lance, if I said to you, I'll give you a million dollars cash, but you can't wake up, you'd say, of course not. Even 10 million, even 20 million, technically any amount of money. So you want to wake up in the morning, but when we do, we don't appreciate it as if someone just handed you $10 million. So imagine if you, if you really actually got $10 million cash every single morning, the excitement, the relief, the enthusiasm you would have, you know, just think about a million, dude, you get pumped up you start to think, damn, that'd be awesome. Free money all the time. Oh my Lord, it would be unbelievable. But yet we wake up, which is worth far more than a million dollars, but nobody's appreciative to that level. Why? Well, it's just because they're, they haven't really looked at it from that perspective. So I call it the million dollar morning, which is wake up with that kind of gratitude and then, you know, knock out four things. But ultimately, I think perspective boils down to a choice. You can choose happiness. You can choose your perspective and you can choose gratitude. Like I'm, I'm grateful to wake up in the morning. So the second I wake up, my eyes open. The first thing I think about is, oh my God, I get another day. Like this is unbelievable. It makes me want to leap out of bed and start attacking the day. Sometimes I'll open my eyes at 3.30. I get another day. I'm up, I'm at them. Why? Well, because man, like I get another day. And so problems don't seem like problems. They seem like opportunities. You know, back when I couldn't afford rent, I couldn't, you know, I was late on my car payments. I'd get up realize I'm lucky to get up. I'm, I'm lucky to be ambulatory. I'm lucky to have breath. I'm lucky to be healthy, you know? And, and now it's not that I, you know, oh, I have to pay rent or get kicked out. I get to pay rent or get kicked out. I get to find a way to pay rent. It was like a challenge or a game or a puzzle. And so I just trained myself to think that way. So now when there's problems, I'm like, yippee ki -yay, let's figure out how to handle this deal. And, and if there is no solution to a problem, well, then it's not really a problem, is it? Yeah, I mean, how did you develop that gratitude, though? Because I used to think, because people talk to me about it, and I say that was a huge thing, huge shift for me. But I used to think it was all bullshit, right? There's a lot of like, I used to just think that, you know, the personal development stuff was kind of kind of bullshit until I started to study the people that were having success. <laughs> then I was like, wait a minute, this is actually changing how I feel and how I speak and how I show up. And I think it's such a valuable thing for people to develop, but how did you, how do you learn that? Is that something that you were taught when you were a kid or is it just a matter of like, fuck this, not, this shit's not working. I need to change things. I need to think differently. How did that start for you? You know, I'm just really observant, man. You know, for a while, I put a sign on my wall that said, congratulations, you get another day, bitch. But I had to be aware of it in the first place. So the awareness to put the sign on the wall was so it reminded me because I'd wake up just like everybody else and be, man, I gotta, you know, got to figure out this freaking rent thing and shit. My car is going to get repoed today. And, you know, I got to come up with this kind of money and that kind of money. And, you know, I had problems like everybody else. And, you know, I, one day I was just like, aware of the fact that, you know, I would rather be alive and getting my car repoed than dead. Like I would mm. rather be, I would rather be alive and healthy and capable of, of finding a way to make my car payment than laying in a hospital bed, nauseous and, and, and can't move. Like, dude, give me a car payment that I can't pay. Mm. Give me the opportunity to try and pay it. That's way better than a lot of different things. And so as soon as I became aware, like, dude, listen, this is, this is just a simple shift of perspective. You can be bummed out about something or you can find the positive in it. And that's just a fact. It's a fact. So, so it doesn't matter what happened. You know, something happens to your child, as sad as it is, there's something positive that can come out of that. You just have to find it. And, and once you realize that it's simply a perspective of how are you looking at things, and that's called awareness. I was aware of it through common sense. Again, I'm, I've always been pretty common sense based. But uh, once I was aware of it, I did have to remind myself, right? And I did it by putting a sign on my wall that said, congratulations, you get another day, bitch. And every time I woke up and I started to, you know, 
look around the room. I saw it. And after about two, three years, dude, I, I'd wake up instantly. Man, dude, yes, we get another day. Boom. And it's just started making me leap out of bed, looking, mm -hmm. looking for, I say, opportunities, which, which other people might call problems. The other day mm -hmm. I was on a podcast. Someone said, how do you handle your problems? And I said, you know, I don't really have any problems. Oh, everyone has problems, Brad. Only if they think they do, bro. I, yeah, I have yeah. opportunities. That's what I like, bro, because, you know, it's really, it's the label you give it, the energy you give it, because then it's really, you're taking away your own power too, because you're dude, thinking that it has this, this thing over you. Dude, if me and you play chess and I put you in a precarious situation, is that a problem? No, it's an opportunity. <laughs> it's an opportunity to freaking move. It's an opportunity to, freaking, we're playing a game. Like well, and just, to get better too, and to learn. If you just focus on number one, be aware that it's just a choice. Yeah. Like, dude, it boils down to a lot of it. It's a choice. Like people always say, you, you know, I'm looking for happiness. Dude, you don't look for it. You don't find happiness. You freaking choose happiness. Yeah. Like you can choose to be happy exactly where you are. Yeah. Right now, dude, you can be a broke joke, getting ready to be booted out, and you can be happy about it. Why? In my opinion, all you have to do is compare. Could it be worse? Well, fuck yeah, it could be worse. Well, dude, you got your health. You got your teeth. You got your eyesight. You got your freaking arms. You can move. You can run. You know, yeah. are you, are you, are you, are you capable? Yes. Well, dude, you got everything you need to kick ass then. Be happy about that. Because what if you didn't? You, you ever heard the saying, I used to be pissed off that I had no shoes until I met a man with no feet. Yeah, I think I have heard that. Same thing, dude. Like, yeah. like, like dude, quit bitching. And, yeah. And start being thankful and grateful. And by the way, I see it in the back. It says, trust the universe. Listen, gratitude has a frequency. Yeah, if bro. You're thankful for something that's, that's not even in your possession yet. I'm telling you, when it comes to laws of attraction, it's not think and grow rich. It should be think, feel, and grow rich. It's the emotion and the vibration and the gratitude and the almost being thankful that you have it even before you do. Mm. It, it draws it to you. Bro, like I, every, I, day, I, every day I, I wake up and you know people say, you know, billionaire. I'm already a billionaire, Lance. It's just I haven't been paid yet. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on payment. But yeah. I, am, I am a billionaire. Man, it's so great to hear someone like you talk about this stuff. Cause sometimes when I talk about it, I'm like, man, I hope people can hear that message and actually get it because sometimes it's certain people that look a certain way that talk about it and it's kind of woo woo, but this conversation around, you know, dudes that actually realize the power of that is, is important because man, there's, there's people that have to hear it from the right person. And they have to be able to resonate with who's saying it. Right. And, you know, someone like you, I would look at you and I wouldn't think just from not knowing that you would practice that kind of stuff, that that stuff is valuable for you, but it's great because then it gives people, it, it, it it's like, it clicks for people that are kind of like on the fence, especially for me, I like to try and speak to the person I was, you know, the athlete, the bartender, the person that needs a fucking the, a shift from the right source. And I feel hearing that from you is important because a lot of times, you know, you hear it in, it's kind of a fluffy message and people don't really take it seriously until you, you hear it from the right person. Do you agree with that? Like, is there something that over the years that you had to hear from the right person to be like, ah, shit, I get it now. Or is it like, how has that been for you with like things clicking? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Sometimes we'll hear it from our parents. We don't listen because it's our parents, but we'll hear it from our uncle or, or somebody else's brother. And all of a sudden, you know, it makes perfect sense. So it just depends on, you know, how, how do you say it? Are you condescending when you say it? You know, are, are, is there any credibility? You know, a lot of times, you know, I've, I've had advice from homeless people about money. And then guess what? A lot of people are like, why would you listen to a homeless person about money? Well, how do you know that homeless person didn't used to be rich as shit? And they're giving you advice about how, to, how not to lose your money, mm. you know? So at the end of the day, I realized somebody knows something I don't. Everybody knows something, yeah. something that you don't. 
So I look at everybody as mentors and, and I'm always wanting to learn something new. But I just, to me, it's how are you saying it? Mm -hmm. And when are you saying it? Timing, you know, it matters. And, you know, you hope you, hope you make an impact. Uh, you know, a lot of people tell me that I make things very simple to understand. Well, good. That yeah. makes me a natural teacher. So, so I try to make things simple because it's not rocket science. This shit's not rocket science. Everyone wants to make it rocket science. You know why? Because it rationalizes why they're not winning. Well, this, right. is, this, this isn't easy. It's not easy to make money. Yes, it is. It's very easy to make money. You solve people's problems. Well, well, that's not easy. Yes, it is. Go look at a problem and think for a minute on how to solve it. Yeah. And then once you get good at solving a problem, you find people with that problem. What's, what's the hard part? You know, well, that takes work. Oh, see, now you start to understand. Oh, so it's, you, it's not hard. You just don't want to do the shit. Well, then admit that you don't want to do the shit and pick something else. Yeah. Like either, either, either take off the jersey or get in the game, bro. You know, at the end of the day, making money is not hard. I like to freaking say things to keep things simple. There's some people out there that want you to be impressed with how intelligent they are. You know, they feel that if you, you know, think they're very, you know, they use ten dollar words when when two two dollar words could have worked just fine. I, I don't I don't pick, I don't try to impress you with my vocabulary or my my my, my vocabulary. Me, me too, bro. <laughs> You know, listen, I can come up, you know, the polyunsaturated hydrocarbons that flow through the medulla oblongata increase the blood <laughs> flow to your rectal pili. I think you should employ the thought of encouraging, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like, what am I doing, dude? I'm trying to get you to understand something or am I trying to impress you? Because again, I don't really try to impress anybody. Yeah. That, that's the difference between me and most people. I don't really, your opinion of me is none of my business. Just like earlier when you said, you know, I hope people hear this, Lance. This, this, this took me a long time to understand, but once I did, it makes all, it, it just relieves you of all that burden. Mm. Listen, you're responsible for what you say. You're not responsible for what people hear you say. Yeah. Like I can say what I say and I'm responsible for what I say. I'm not responsible for what you hear. Right. So once you realize, dude, I can't, I can't. I can't worry about what you hear. I can only worry about what I say. So if my goal is to get you to understand it, do you think I should use a bunch of highfalutin words or do you think I should just fucking keep it simple? Yeah. Keep it so simple. So when people ask me questions, I, I just try to keep it simple. Knowing full well, I, I, I don't know whether what you'll hear, but I can promise you this. I know that I'll say it in a way that it's as simple as I can make it. Yeah, I completely agree, bro. That's I try and do the same thing. I don't have a vocabulary to be able to pretend. So I think that is what people need as well. And that's what people can resonate with. And yeah, I mean, I um, thank you for bringing that up because I think a lot of people, entrepreneurs especially, and this kind of leads into the next part that I want to talk to you about. It's It's, we see somebody that's doing well and we try and speak to people like they're speaking and we're, we're trying to almost change the way we are to try and hit the right person, but really we're not being in truth. And we're trying to almost bullshit ourselves to be more like somebody that we admire, but really people, they want to hear what you really have to say. So for you, has that, how has that been as you've kind of grown and you're speaking out. Have you gone through that challenge when you're 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 like, all right, who am I talking to? And should I say it this way or should I just keep it exactly like what comes through? Because I think a lot of people struggle with that, you know, especially with social media. This guy's doing it like this, so I have to try and be like this guy, but he's a different dude, different lady with a different story. And we're trying to like, you know, almost mimic that person. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, I believe in emulating actions. Um, so in other words, if you see me doing something and you want what I have, I would highly suggest you do what I'm doing. Um, yeah. 
I would say you emulate actions, but you, but you be yourself. In other words, I'm not trying to be anybody. Um, I do see people trying to be me a lot. Um, but has it always been like that for you? Have you always owned your, your, your truth or has it been something that's been like, fuck, all right, I have to trust that I know this. I have no. to trust who I am. No, when I was younger, dude, I used to lie and bullshit everybody because I was ashamed of, of where I was from. And, you know, we lived in a house that was like a little shit box next to these big houses. You don't see it anymore. But back where I grew up, we were, we were living on this hill and we were surrounded by nice houses and what I call good families. You know, they mm. be cleaver families. My, my family, you know, we, I felt that we were looked at as like the trash of the neighborhood. Like, in other words, we ruined the neighborhood. I felt that way, dude. Mm -hmm. I felt like, man, we're the snotty nosed, dirty kids with no manners and shitty parents. And, you know, so I started to lie and act like we were rich and, and pretend that my dad owned real estate. And did, I told people he owned Disneyland before. Like I'd show monopoly deeds to, you know, these are the properties my dad owns. Like we're really rich. We're just, you know, you know, in, 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 a, in a temporary shack for whatever reason. I don't even know what I lied about, but I just lied and I was full of shit and I, and I made up stories when the truth sounded better. Um, like I was just taught to defend and, and, and pretend because I was ashamed. Now, it fortunately got me alienated and hated a lot. Like literally I wasn't allowed to play with a lot of those Beaver Cleaver kids because the parents didn't even like me. They all knew I was full of shit. They all knew I was a liar. They, they, they probably thought I was some sort of, you know, mental issue. It was such a problem till I was about 13. And, and because I was alienated from six to 13 years old, finally, my parents moved to a new town about, you know, 30 miles away from where I grew up. And I just said, I'm not because it, it backfired, man. Nobody liked me. So I tried the lion bullshit and hey, I'm, I'm going to act like somebody else. And it didn't work. And so when I moved it, when I moved to Eugene, I said, fuck that, dude, I'm going to be myself. And if someone doesn't like it, well, then, you know, it is what it is. And so I started to be myself and I started to tell the truth and I started to freaking be real. And next thing you know, I was popular, man. Like I was getting freaking girls and, you know, it was the exact opposite of lying and trying to be someone you're not and trying to bullshit people. So Fortunately, at an early age, that happened, and it and it taught me the lesson, you know, early. Most people have never learned that lesson. You know why? Because they never got such drastic pain from doing it. Matt, some people they'll act like somebody else, and they'll get they'll get someone's attention, they'll get the love, but it won't last, and that's why they end up sad and depressed and lonely because the, the, they're not being themselves, and they attracted the wrong people in their life. Mm -hmm. If you understand this hopefully it'll help anyone listening to this if you're if you're pretending to be something you're not the people you attract will be attracted to something you are not it's only a matter of time before the real you shows yourself and then you're going to destroy and lose everything that you have and everything that you built so why would you risk that why not just be yourself so you can attract people that should be around you because if you're being authentically who you are and they're around you, they're around you for the right reasons. Mm. If you're pretending to be something, they're only around you temporarily. Why would you want to build temporary networks and temporary success? Like common sense tells me, no, no, no if, I, if, I, if it takes time to build all this, why not build a solid you know, network? Why not build solid friendships? Ones that already know everything about you because you're real. I just say, keep it real, man. Yeah. It's, it's less don't, work. Don't. It's less work well, having to be somebody else acting all the time. Well, people are afraid, dude. You know why? Because they don't like themselves. Mm. So, so they literally want to, you know, Hey, Brad Lee's cool. I'm going to act like Brad Lee. Well, listen, dude, the reason you think I'm cool is because I already did the work on myself. I like myself. If you go be you and, and, and there's something you don't like about yourself, and you do the work to fix it pretty soon, you start to build self-worth, self-value. And pretty soon you do like you. And guess what? Everybody will think you're cool too. Why? Because that's how it works, man. 
the universe will attract people that that think you're cool and they will repel people that think you're not like i get people that go oh this guy thinks he's so fucking cool first of all i do think i'm cool and if that offends you then i don't want you around me anyway because you're a dick yeah. so at the end of the day if like dude you want your friend to be positive and 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 happy with themselves of course you do if you like that person i don't want someone to be depressed i don't want someone to, to be insecure not if they're my friend i want them mm. to be positive i want them to be i want them to be secure i want them to feel that they're worth something i help i chip in on that by the way so if i think i'm cool and i do and someone thinks i'm not cool because i think i'm cool well what's that tell me that they, they shouldn't be around me i don't want anyone around me that that, that that is a liability and anyone that wants to take away your happiness is a liability and yes, I think I'm cool. I think you're cool, dude. Thanks, brother. Aren't you? I think cool? you're cool too, man. But aren't you cool? Of course, man. I've yeah. It's not. It's always something that I've. Uh, I don't know. I've over the years, yeah. I've I've learned to sort of accept that and just be that. <laughs> like, well, well, again, you've probably done the work. You know, you're not like most. You're 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 kind of. You've done some work, man. You can tell. And, and that's the thing is most people, they haven't done the work, man. They, they haven't even heard of the work. All they've heard is society telling them one thing and feeding their head full of shit. And until they reach a dark place or they run into some sort of problem that they can't escape, or they find somebody that changes their, their, their mindset, you know, mm. they're just going to go through this until they finally learn the lessons. Dude, that's why I wrote the book the hard way which yeah. by the way comes out in two weeks. I don't know when your podcast drops, but well, we'll make sure to time it perfectly. Don't worry. We'll fucking well, get it. It'll, it'll be out for years. So if, yeah, if yeah. It six months to drop this <laughs> thing, the book will probably be out unless you're dropping it tomorrow. But if not, it's the lessons I've learned the hard way. So you don't yeah. have to. And here's the cool part. Those lessons you're going to learn anyway. You don't have to buy my book to learn them, but mm -hmm. you're going to spend a lot more to, to learn them because these are universal laws, man. Yeah. No. You're going to learn this shit. You're going to learn this shit, bro. And, and, and trust me, learning the hard way, there's no, there's no glamor in that, you know? Yeah. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard uh, the old saying, you know, uh, like, in other words, it, I used to ask people on my podcast, would you rather earn 20 million or get handed a hundred million? And everybody would say, earn 20. And I would be like, why would you rather earn $20 million than just get handed? I wouldn't mind getting handed a hundred million. Yeah. And they'd say, dude, it's not, it's not worth it unless you work for it. And it's like, dude, who put that shit in your head? And then other people would say, well, at least if I earned it, I could do it again. If you handed me a hundred million, I wouldn't know how to do it again. If you had a hundred million, you probably wouldn't have to do it again. Number mm. one. Number two, you can learn from losing 20 million too. So now yeah. you still have 80 million. And you'd learn the same thing. Someone learned making 20 million. You can learn by losing. You can learn by getting. At the end of the day, why would you pass on $100 million? Well, it's not worth it unless you... See, dude, that is the, that is the bullshit we've been told mm. our whole life. You know, fly under the radar. Don't talk to strangers. Play it safe. Don't risk anything. You know, that's the wrong way to go, dude. Risk is opportunity. You should be looking to risk things. Yeah. If you want to succeed, you need to take a chance, get really good at solving problems, okay? Really good at solving problems. Pay attention and make adjustments. Everyone says, no, just focus and never, never stop. Dude, that's not true. I started out in one direction. I'm, I'm now over here making eight, nine figures. I didn't start out. No big right deal, now. huh? No big deal. Yeah, but I didn't start out this way. <laughs> I listened and I made adjustments along the way and everybody yeah. tells you don't make adjustments, you know, go after what you want with, with, you know, laser vision. That's not true, dude. Pay attention to the market, pay attention to the feedback, pay attention to the details, make adjustments. So take a chance or work for someone who did right. Mm -hmm. Get really good at solving problems. And how are you going to get good at anything by doing it? Well, then why do, why do you wake up avoiding all your problems? Why do you why do you wake up and avoid problems when those are the very things that make you good? Yeah. So so solve problems, get good at solving problems, tackle your problems. And then number three, make adjustments, man. 
listen and make pay attention and make adjustments along the way. And then number four, constantly learn and train and get new information going in your life. And then, and then step five, just outdo the day before. Like, what'd you do yesterday? Did you outdo yesterday? And if the answer is no, you didn't. Why? You didn't know to? Mm. So it says, well, how do you outdo every day? You, you, you intentionally try to outdo the day before. And I'll bet you, even if you're only successful 50% of the time, you're going to be a freaking rock star. But most people, they're not even aware that they, they, they don't even try. It's not intentional. It's not even an awareness. Mm. Like, get up, man, move, try, quit worrying about other people, start worrying about yourself, quit comparing and start preparing. Yeah. I got a question for you around that. That just came to me. I don't want to forget. How do you know? So you're, you're dealing with over the years running companies, you know, you're growing, you know, big things are happening, more money, more problems, all that kind of stuff. Everything. True. Every, well, just meaning as it grows, you have more oppor- more opportunity and more money. Yeah, more yeah, yeah. That's the wrong language. Thank you for catching me on that. Thank you. Cause that's bullshit. I agree. I mean, as you grow, there's just, there's more opportunity and more to navigate through. So my question is this, when you're dealing with different things and you are getting pushback at you, and things aren't working. This is for the entrepreneurs listening. So they're trying things, they're getting feedback. When is the time when you keep going? Like this is just part of it or it's time to pivot. At what point is that? And how for you at the level you're at, how do you make that decision? And how do you make it from a place without making emotional decisions versus like from your, your, your truth, you know, your intuition? You know, how does that work for you and how, what advice could you give for people that are facing these kind of things, but don't know whether to push through or make a pivot? Well, again, I would say use common sense and quit trying to complicate things like, yeah, like, listen to what your question was. When do you know, listen, listen, when do you know when to make an adjustment? Right. Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, cause people will be like, just push through, just grind right. it, grind yeah. it. But, but like, again, let's try to uncomplicate. Yeah. Okay, shit. cool. Let's do it. When do you know that you need to, you know, pivot? Well, when shit's not going right. Well, shit might not go right all the time. Why would you change? We didn't say anything about changing. We didn't say about give up. We said pivot. So if I, if I know for a fact, I want to go do 10 X, you know, whatever, whatever my goal is. Right. And I'm, I'm heading there and it's not happening. Okay. It's, it's, it's not happening. Uh, you know, it should be happening by now. It's not happening, but it should be happening, mm-hmm. but it's not happening. Well, that's when you make a fucking pivot, bro. Like, you know, it's not happening. Well, let me try something else. Still not happening. Let me try something else. <clears throat> Still not happening. Let me try it this way. Still not happening. Let me try it that way. Still not happening. Let me try it this way. Still not happening. Seek counsel. Anybody know how to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. Oh, I figured it out. Boom. And now you're where you wanted to be. So most people say, well, when do you know? Dude, when you're not progressing, there's a problem. When, when you assume, if I do this, here's what's going to happen. And you do it and it doesn't happen. That's the time to make a pivot. Now, if you're unaware that all you had to do was keep doing what you were doing longer and it would have and it would have worked. Well, then again, eh, that's not what we're talking about when you say, when do you know to pivot? Because, you know, to pivot when you're not progressing. But what if you're so close? So close for what? Like, what if you, you know, people are like, oh, I was almost going to quit. And then I ended up. could 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 you again? We're not talking about quitting, dude. We're talking about pivoting. Okay. Like I'm not quitting ever. Yeah. I'm going to continue always. There is no quit, but how am I doing it is the question. Let's say I go to the gym and I lift one, one light weight once and I do it for six months and I don't get the muscles I'm looking for. Well, when should I pivot? When, when the fucking results aren't coming and when the results aren't coming, you don't stop going to the gym. 
you, right. you get new information or you're like, hey, let me try to do 10 of them. And then you do 10 of them. And guess what? Oh, shit. Now my muscles are sore. And then, oh, shit, look, it's starting to work. Well, why? Well, because you're seeing progress. If you're not seeing progress, it's time to pivot. You know, there's there's no such thing as, you know, you should continue getting no progress. Like, hey, listen, when, when you start out and you're heading to California, even if every day you're 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 driving and you're not going anywhere, continue to drive. No, dude, there's something wrong if you're not getting anywhere. So again, if you take what I just said and don't try to complicate it, because everyone will try to complicate that. Yeah. Well, like you did, you said, you said, well, how do you know it's you just haven't done it long enough? How do you know? I didn't say quit. I said, try something else, pivot, move, try something else. What's the, what's the harm of trying something else? Mm. What's the harm? No, no harm. What if all of a sudden you tried something else and boom, you started progressing rapidly. Keep doing it. Dude, repeat the actions that work and freaking pivot the ones that don't. But what about here? I just like, I like digging into this shit because I, 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 lo I love this. What about though, if people are coming from fear where they're, they're making decisions because they're scared to lose versus like playing to win and making yeah. decisions based on their fear versus like, fuck, I got this. Well, fear, fear is something that is never going away. So mm -hmm. you need to use your fear and you leverage your fear because I don't think you can eliminate fear, but like some people fear what will happen if they, if they lose, I fear what will happen if I don't try. Mm. So, so I use my fear to jump. Why? Because I fear what happens if I don't jump. You fear what happens if you jump. I don't call that fear. I call that curiosity. You replace fear with curiosity. Um, and, and, and ultimately, usually the fear is boils down to a lack of self-belief, a lack of trust in yourself. Like, again, dude, I'm not worried about starting a new business. Well, what if it fails? Who cares, dude? Number one, I've been broke before. I'll probably be broke again someday. You know, I'm not afraid to be broke. And maybe that's why I'm not, because I'm not afraid to be it. Usually we attract what we fear. You know that? Yeah, it's a great point. I don't fear being broke. I, I don't fear, you know, I don't fear the shit. But to me, the, the reason why we don't want to jump and we don't want to take a chance, and if we really think about it and quit trying to freaking complicate it, it's mainly because we fear the unknown. Now, now. I believe we have a natural fear of the unknown because that's what made us. We, we were made by the unknown. So like, if I tell you to go into that room right there and it's pitch black, you don't know what's in that room. Dude, you're like, fuck you, dude, I ain't going in that room. But if I flip on the light and say, go in that room and you can see what's in there, you walk right in like, what, what do you want me to do? Like, yeah. why, why, why would I be afraid of coming in this room? The only reason you're not afraid is because you can fucking see what's in it, bitch. Yeah. But, if you, but if you were, if you were, if it was a dark room, especially at night in a scary house with, with some ayahuasca, yeah, <laughs> now all of a sudden you don't necessarily want to go in that room. Why? Yeah. Because of the unknown. We yeah. fear the unknown. So again, dude, I would just change the fear to curiosity. I I'm curious when it comes to the unknown, I want to know, I want to know. And so if I'm, if there's a dark room, dude, I want to get in there and find out what's in there. What's the worst that can happen. And by the way, here's a question that I've been sharing with audiences. Yeah. lately. Ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? Because no matter what you're doing, what's the worst that can happen? Like, what's the worst that can happen to you? Be homeless, lose everything. Nope. Yeah, die, I guess. Yep. Yep. I'm not even, I'm not scared of death though. Yeah, but death is the worst thing that can yeah. happen. To yeah. Yeah. As a human being, as an individual. Yeah. Okay. So death is the worst case that can happen. Yeah. So, so now uh, if I go ask that girl out, what's the worst that can happen? If the, if the answer isn't death, then, that's, then, then go for it. That's so the underlying happen? fear, isn't it? It's really, that's where it comes from is that fear of death is, is like the deepest fear that people have. It yeah, stops them. Die asking no. her out. She says, no, you're not going to die failing. You're not going to die being broken, homeless. You're not going to die because your business crumbled. You're mm -hmm. going to learn. You're going to freaking, 
you're going to, you're going to progress in one way or the other, and you're going to become a better person. If you're, you know, of that mindset, you could also get really depressed and say, I knew, I knew I was going to fail. Well, that, again, that's a mindset issue. Dude, right. I have these things called the, 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 the life gauges. These are my life gauges. Every time I'm, I'm, I'm stuck or I want to, I'm not getting what I think I deserve or where I want to be. I, I, I run everything through these five gauges. I call them my life gauges. The first, the first gauge, if you can picture a car, right? And there's gauges. Like if you, if you're driving along and shit starts to sputter and slow down and you're not causing it, you, what do you do? You look at the gauges, like what the hell's going on? So these are the gauges. The first gauge is your mindset. Nine times out of 10, dude, the reason you're not getting what you want is because you don't believe you deserve it. You're afraid to go after it. You're not sure of how to do it. You're, you're fearful. You're, you're insecure. You're, you're not even trying. So it's all mindset. Your belief system is what causes you to act the way you act and choose the things you choose. So you have to be able to change your beliefs, right? Most people don't want to change and they don't even know how to change their beliefs. Well, you change your beliefs by getting new information. The, the only way you'll ever change your belief system is with new information. If you get the same information you've always got, you'll never believe anything new. Mm -hmm. So you have to seek new information on a daily basis. But the first gauge you want to always double check is, is mindset. What are my beliefs surrounding this issue? You know, do, is my mindset truly believing this is possible? Because if you don't believe it's possible, dude, it's just not. Mm -hmm. So your mindset's the gauge number one. You check that gauge. If that gauge is fine, then you move to your next one, which is your motions. Okay, your motions. What actions are you taking? What habits are you? You know what? 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 What are your habits? What? What? What motions are you taking? What movement towards something or away from something? Like motions lead to emotions, by the way. But <coughs> your motions. Let's say you want to lose weight. Your mindset's positive. You're really excited. You know you can do it. But then, boom, you move to your motion gauge. What are you doing every day? Well, well I'm not working out. Okay, so your motions is the problem. You're not mm. doing anything. Mm. So that's the motion gauge. Are you taking the right actions on a daily basis? Are you forming the right habits towards this goal? Yes or no? This is a yes or no, man. I want to lose weight, but I'm not eating right. Come on, man. You, you, you got to try and figure that one out. Like, dude, you got to eat right. Well, mm -hmm. I know, but, but what, dude, your motions are the problem. You're not taking the right actions. If it's not the motions, then you move on to your measurements. Okay. What are you measuring? Could be the problem, right? So you got your motion. No, I'm sorry. I just, I just forgot one. You got mm -hmm. your mindset. That's number one. Then it's your maps. Okay. Do you know where you're going? Most mm. people don't know where they're going. They don't know how to get there. Their map. Just like if you're going to go to New York to try to find a billion dollars I've left in a cave, would you rather have a GPS or, or, or a map drawn by a kid with a crayon? So the more detailed and clear your map is, the better. Then it's your motions because you got to know where you're going in, in order to, to get there. So, so your mindset, then your map, then your motions, then your measurements. Your measurements are what am I measuring every day? Because if you're not measuring it, you're not managing it. So you got to figure out what are your key performance indicators? What are the, what are the things that, are, that you're measuring to, to, to determine movement or, or, or lack thereof? And then the last gauge is your money gauge. Now, most people think, well, if I don't have money, I'm going to check my money gauge. You don't check your money gauge when you don't have money. You check your mindset gauge. You check your freaking maps. You check your freaking motions. You check your freaking measurements. That's why you don't have money. It's your mindset. It's your map. You don't have clarity. It's your motions. You're not taking the actions necessary to achieve. And it's your measurements. You're not measuring the right things. That's why you don't have money. People say, then what's the money gauge for? The money gauge is when you're doing all these other things and you're making a bunch of money, but you're not going anywhere. For, for 20 years, dude, I made a bunch of money and I was still broke. I was just broke at another level. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd make you know, 40, $50,000 a month. And I'd spend 40, $50,000 a month, bro. And that's broke. And some people look at you and go, Oh, he's got a boat. He's got a car. He's got a nice house. He's still broke, dude. You know how you know if you're broke or not? Ask yourself this question. How much money would I have come in if I didn't do my job? 
And if the answer is none, well, then you're fucking broke, dude. You could lose your job tomorrow. You could lose your earned income tomorrow. If that earned income didn't turn it, wasn't invested and utilized to create passive income. What's passive income? Money that comes from your money. It's coming because you used your money to create it. It's money created off money. So most people blow their money like I used to. So that's, that's, that's why you look at that money box. It's like, where is my money going? What am I doing with my money? So first you have to get some. And then once you get some, it's like, what am I doing with it? Are you using it to you know, impress other people? Are you using it to buy liabilities instead of assets? Because, dude, you can make good money 10 years later and be broke and, and wonder what the fuck is going on. Well, what's going on is your fucking money gauge is broke, dude. You're, you're buying liabilities. Someone says, well, well what, what, what do you mean? I bought a house. Well, I, I know. Well, sometimes a house is not an asset. It's very simple. If a lia- Here's how you discover whether it's an asset or a liability. Does it cost you money or make you money? Does it cost you money? That's a liability. Does it make me money? That's an asset. So I could go out and buy a Lamborghini. That costs me money. Mm -hmm. But if that Lamborghini causes me to get a thousand job offers and makes me $6 million in job offers, now that Lamborghini becomes an asset, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. If I buy a house that costs me 1500 bucks to live in, but I don't rent it out, it just costs me 1500 bucks to live there. Is that an asset or a liability? It's say that again. What is that? It's a liability. Liability. Yeah. Well, yeah, because dude, again, don't complicate it. Mm. Well, you know, well, you need somewhere to live, Brad. And you know, it's all this rationalization complication. Look, it's simple. Liabilities cost you money. This shirt, is it a liability or an asset? Well, it doesn't make me any fucking money. Well, that's depends who you ask, bro. It doesn't make me any money. This shirt does not make me any money. Now, if I bought this shirt and I leased it out and I rented it. Yeah, I got you. Now this shirt makes me 30 bucks a month. Well, now it's an asset. So dude, if you just spend your life collecting assets, by the time you're my age, dude, you're going to be rich as shit because dude, you can literally stop working your earned income and your, and your income would be massive just because of, of the incremental assets that you bought along the way. Everyone thinks you need all this money. You need apartment buildings. You need all this big money. No, you don't, dude. You need to start right now, especially when you're young, and you need to start buying assets and stop buying liabilities. And, and then, again, most people won't do it. Why? Well, because they don't want to look like a broke joke. They don't want to look like they're wearing the shitty shoes. I want the fucking Louis Vuittons. I want the fucking nice cars. I want the freaking Hublots. I want the fancy offices. Well, dude, if you, if you get those out of order, you're going to be broke your whole life. Yeah. I personally am a, am a, am an advocate of both. Meaning I bought a Mercedes so I could look and feel rich. I wanted to look rich and feel rich. And so I bought a Mercedes I couldn't afford. And that shit worked. Why? Made me work harder. Made me go farther. Made me more credible. Gave me more opportunities. See, so I'm not saying don't buy nice shit. I'm saying make sure that they're assets, man. Would you say the first thing people should do, let's say the entrepreneurs, is invest in their business, invest in themselves first? themselves and their business and keep doing that. Yes. When I start, when I started this company, Lightspeed, I didn't have much money. I didn't really have any, but, but when I got up to $10,000, I took five of it and hired somebody rather than get a nicer car or a better apartment or get out of debt. I didn't, I took five grand, hired somebody. Now there was two of us to get back to 10. And then as soon as we got back to 10, I grabbed five of it and hired somebody else. And then boom, got back to 10, grabbed five of it. So every, so 10 was my number. Every time I got that additional 10 grand, mm. I'd take it and give it to somebody else. And, and everyone kept saying like two years in, dude, I thought you were, I thought you were going to be rich because I didn't look rich and I didn't feel rich, dude. I'd never had any money, but I had fucking 20 people helping me make money and then mm. turned into 40 people. And then all of a sudden it wasn't 10 grand anymore. Shit, I was doing it with a million. 
and I'm still doing it. Like right now, dude, I mean, I make a shit ton of money, but I spend a shit ton of money, but I don't spend it. I'm investing it. I'm trying to grow and scale and I'm using the money as a tool to get more money. Money is a tool. If you don't use it, it's worthless. If I put $10 million in that, wherever you're sitting right now and told you, Lance, hold on to this, don't spend it. Eventually you'd be like, bro, can you come get this shit out of my fucking place? Like it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a nuisance. Yeah. Money's worthless unless you use it. And most people, you know, they get going in this entrepreneurial journey and they start to get a little money and then they remember how it was to be broke and they don't want to feel that way anymore. So they hold on to their money. So they have yeah. the security blanket and they feel good about it. You know, I got the security blanket. I'm not broke anymore, but in reality, dude, you just stunted your growth because that right there, that is the tool to make more money. And you're not, you're not willing to use it anymore. Mm. It'd be the equivalent of me walking up to you, see you building a birdhouse with a butter knife, and, but yet you got a whole shed of tools right next to you. And I say, Lance, what are you doing? And you're like, dude, I'm building a birdhouse. And I go, yeah, but you're using a butter knife. And you'd say, yeah. And I'd say, but you got all those tools sitting right there. Why don't you just use those tools? And you say, no, I'm saving those. Mm. I'm like, what are you saving them for? And you say, in case I want to build something someday. Mm. Why aren't you building a birdhouse, motherfucker? Like, so put down Put down the butter knife, Lance. Use the tools you Use got the right there tools. in front of you. Would you would you say though that for somebody to be able to create that wealth that they have to be willing to spend that or invest that as like an energy of yes. getting used to if you have the courage to spend that on yourself or put that money out there, do you think that makes it easier to be able to get it back? Million percent. Yeah, that's great. That's great every advice. Time, every time I get rid of money, more appears. Hmm. Now, again, invest and use. Don't blow and spend. Like, dude, you blow money, it's going to disappear and it ain't coming back. So It goes so quick, too. It goes quick. So don't blow it. Use it. People are like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, like, for example, I was talking with a guy. He's like, man, I'm trying to scale my business. I don't even know. I've been stuck at this number for this many years and I can't figure out how to get past this certain number. And I said, oh, okay. And he says, dude, you mind helping me a little bit? I said, well, you know, give me 10 G's. I'll tell you what to do. He said, fuck 10 G's, fuck you, fuck you. Uh, I mean, like, the, again, stupid, right? Now, if he gave me 10 G's and I was a scam or a fraud, well, then he might've lost 10 G's. So don't, don't worry about, you know, getting burnt now and again, because again, people are out there, they will burn you. But in that story, and by the way, that I never asked the dude for 10 G's. I just told him what to do. But the, the funny part was, uh, I said, well, how much uh, do you spend marketing? And he said, I don't spend any money marketing. And I said, you're not marketing your business. And he said, no, I get a lot of word of mouth and I'm like so much that you want to expand, but you can't, you got so much business coming in that you're just staying the same, you know, you get comfortable and, and that's what happened to him. So he took a little bit of money, started marketing and sure enough, he started growing. Well, marketing costs money, dude. Like Copy what kind money. of things specifically? Like if somebody's like, what kind of marketing are you talking about? Dude, any kind of marketing, but especially nowadays, digital marketing. Like, dude, you need to you need to have a web developer that can build landing pages. You need to have copywriters that can write compelling copy. You need to have people that understand nurture campaigns. You need to you need to you need to have a freaking compelling offer. You know, you need to you need to hire people to deliver what you're offering. You know, you need to sometimes spend money to deliver before you ever get paid what that means is like let's say for example you know my compelling offer to to get you to buy this is i'm going to give you a box free well this cost me ten dollars so i have to give away a thousand boxes that's ten thousand dollars i have to spend hoping you'll like it and keep it most people won't do that well shit dude if you're so if you're so sure your product's so great if, if you give if you if you give away a thousand people and none of them fucking keep it after that dude you're you're fucking with the wrong product mm. and quit bullshitting yourself you know but this is my grandma's recipe dude no one gives a fuck mm. dude best known beats best every fucking day write that down best known beats best 
every fucking day. Yeah. Yeah, the more you're seeing. Dude, best known beats best every single day. You put out a lot of fucking content, man. Yes, like I a do. lot. And it's 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 great. Have you did you have you always put out that much or has that been recently within the last year? I can't remember because I feel like you've upped your game with your content these days. You know, everyone says that, but I've been up <laughs> I've been up in my room for about four years. Like you have a camera right on the side that you're speaking to right now to create more content for the fact for, for marketing, which is, which is great. Well, that's because listen, personal branding is everything. Like yeah. my personal brand probably makes me seven figures a year. And my personal brand next year will probably make me eight figures, 100% based off the personal brand. So you want to, the, the kill sets I was talking about at Dream, yeah. Number one, sales, closing, and persuasion. If you, if you don't know how to do it and you're not good at it, you should master that. Okay. Number two, marketing. Marketing is more important than sales because if you have no one to sell, dude, it doesn't matter how good of a salesperson or closer you are if there's nobody to close. You have to have marketing skills. Okay. You have to have the ability to freaking build a personal brand and you have to have the ability to leverage social media. Those four things, those are my kill sets. Sales, marketing, personal branding, and social media. With those four things mastered, even at a, even at a basic level, you're going to make seven, eight figures, no matter what, no matter what. So if your goal is to be rich, dude, unlock those kill sets now. So, okay. Sorry. I don't want to cut. I was just going to ask you something, but go ahead. Well, the personal branding one is, is pretty important too, because a lot of times, you know, people will hear you or see you and then they'll look and, and you have no credibility. So personal branding takes a little while and you might as well get started now. So you have to have what I call the content flow. See, most people try to figure out what to put on social media. And that's mm -hmm. the problem. Dude, you don't try and figure out what to put on social media. You put you on social media. So when you're seeing my social media that's rapidly gaining attention, yeah. it's, because, it's because there's not a lot of people putting themselves out there because they're afraid of what people will think. I don't care what you think. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah, that's, so, what, that's what I like about you, bro. Yeah, but Lance, if you're so afraid of the hate, you'll never find the love. Right. Well, I don't care about the hate, hate on me. I don't really care, but, but here's what I do. I have a camera on me while I'm at work being me. See, we're human beings, not human doings. I'm not going to try and think, what should I do? What should I say? What can I put out there where people will think I'm smart? What should I do? You know, I just be me. I have a camera talking to you. I have a camera when I do my podcast. I have a camera when I'm talking to employees. I have a camera when I'm talking to my kids. If you come into this office Monday through Friday, you're going to have a camera in your face if you're talking to me. Why? Because I'm being me. And yeah. that's what they chop up. And that's why people resonate with it. It's because they're like, dude, he's so real. Well, that's because yeah. I'm not trying to think this shit up, man. It's me being me. And you're just getting a glimpse of it. That's what I appreciate, bro. Like I saw it. I saw, I witnessed you in your environment. And that's what I like is that a lot of people aren't the way they, they, they portray a different person you see. And even when you get on a podcast, you're like, Oh shit, you're not the same. You're not the same dude. I thought, or the same chick. Like it's, and that's what I like. And that's why I dude. That's why people resonate with you so much. I'm not just kissing your ass. Hey, it's, it's the truth though. Hey, that's, you know why? Do you know why? Because, because the highest frequency, is truth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's so hard for some people to do, which is so crazy. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's not hard, dude. It's not hard. That's a fucking perspective. It's not yeah. hard to do. It's easy to be you. You're yeah, you. I love. I, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, but it's easy to be you. The question is, is why can't you? Well, it's mm. because you're afraid, right? You're afraid, man. It's easy to do. You're just afraid. Like, like, is it easy to lift weights? No, depends. Depends on, depends it's on what you're easy. You go, you lift heavy things in the morning. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's still hard about lifting heavy things. Depends how heavy the weights are. I'm just fucking around. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't mean easy. Like, you know, it ain't yeah. easy lifting a thousand pounds. Yeah, well, that yeah. Ain't easy. Okay. But my point is, is it's easy lifting weights. Yeah. How come, totally. How come most people are fat? with with fucking butter tits how come how come most people are not in shape well because it's easier 
not to lift weights. Right. And everybody wants it to be easy. Well, folks, pay attention to me real quick. If you get nothing out of this podcast, get this. Life's almost like a mirror. It's like a dichotomy. It's the craziest thing that I've noticed. If you're seeking comfort and you really want to be comfortable, you literally need to be uncomfortable. If you go after shit that makes you uncomfortable, you will end up comfortable. But if you go after what makes you comfortable, you're going to end up uncomfortable. Mm. It's the craziest shit. Everything's almost backwards. It's like, dude, I, I you know, I, I, life's weird, man. You know, yeah. I wish, I wish like, you know, I could live all over again without losing my knowledge. I mean, if I could be 18 again, dude, number one, I'd read like it was going out of style. Like every day when all my friends were out partying and when I was out partying, I would be home reading shit. So if you were 18 in the, in right now where we're at in this craziness in the world, this is like a perfect. Yeah. Okay. So you're 18 now where you see the world is at with where you see is lacking and what people are doing. So you, the first thing would be reading, learn. Dude, I'd be reading new information every single day and I'd, I'd be out to disprove everybody. Here's what I always tell people. Take what I just said and go disprove me. That's the easiest way to tell if something's real. Quit thinking it's real. I heard it's not real. I think that's fake. Go fucking test it, bitch. Mm. Go disprove me. Take what I say and go disprove me. And guess what? You'll either disprove me or you'll fucking prove me right. Either way, you're going to get progress. But most people don't. I'm going to call around. I, you know, I heard this guy. I don't really believe him. Well, well, what'd you do? No, I just don't believe him. That's an idiot move. And if I've ever heard of it. So what I would do is I would read my ass off and I would, and I would try to disprove what I'm learning because when you're out there to disprove it, you end up proving it at the same time, at the same speed. So I would read more. I would invest more wisely I spent money my whole life. I should have invested money my whole life. I'd be so freaking wealthy right now. In um, what? What would you invest in right now? Well, it, would, it wouldn't have been right now. It would have been my whole life. Real estate, storage facilities, anything that pays monthly fees, rent, um, real estate, freaking Bitcoin, like freaking I would have, I mean, I, I, I could have made millions on Bitcoin, but I didn't understand it. I was always taught, don't mess with things you don't understand. That's not true, dude. Learn the shit you don't understand so you can mess with it. Um, but dude, if I were 18 right now, I'd read a lot more. I'd think bigger because, dude, listen, when you, when, you, when you think about it, making a million dollars takes the same amount of work as making $10 million. You just need to think bigger. So I would have thought bigger. I would have read more. And I would have cared less about what everybody thought. Because again, dude, I, I had to learn it the hard way, dude. You, you, you shouldn't worry about what other people think. Like if, if there's one thing that I'm good at that, that a lot of people aren't is not giving a rat's ass what other people think about me. I, like I don't care if someone doesn't like what I say. I don't care. Like you can leave comments on my social media. I leave them up. People are like, dude, I saw a comment the other day. Like, why don't you delete that? I'm like, dude, that's fucking entertaining shit. Like someone reading through the comments, dude, that's funny. Yeah. You know, I, I laugh at people. People think I'm going to get mad when they put me down on social media, which I don't get a lot of hate. I thought I'd get a lot more, but maybe I'm not out there enough, but I do get some people talking shit. And when they do, number one, I leave it up there. Number two, I, I make a comment on it. Like, you know, smiley face, laughing, fucking love you too, bro. Cause it doesn't affect me one mm. tiny ass bit. You can't, your opinion of me does not change my opinion of me. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like I value myself. So you don't need to. Think about that. If you value yourself authentically, you don't need other people to validate you. Mm. you validate yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's important because it's easy to get bent out of shape, especially in the comment section. If you pay attention to that and get all, you know, butt hurt about it. I know. I was worried, you know, I, I was worried when I come out with my book, I'm going to get all these bad reviews and, and, you know, 
I, I told my girl, she just, that's what she was asking me. And I said, dude, I go, I can't wait to, to see some reviews. Like, I hope they're good. I, yeah. you always want them, want them to be good, but dude, I can't wait to get some bad reviews from my book. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. So would you, I want to just revisit this because I want to, I want to bring this home for people. Would you say the number one thing that people should be learning right now is sales? Like if you had to think of like one skill, would it be marketing? Would it be copywriting sales or or all three? Like what would be the most important thing for somebody to master right now in the world that we're living in? I would say marketing. Marketing. Okay. Yeah. Because, because like I said, you can be really good at sales closing and persuasion and have no one to talk to. And you're sitting there with your dick in your hand. Right. You know, but marketing, you can be pretty good at sales. And as long as you have a shitload of people to talk to, you're going to be making more, more money because you're a marketer. So like marketing is the number one, my opinion, I get a bunch of college kids hit me up all the time. You know, what should I do? I'm getting out of college. What should I study in? What should I do? Marketing. Okay. And marketing is not just Facebook ads. It's not just freaking paid advertising. It's freaking copy. It's, you know, creating compelling offers. It's retargeting. It's pixels. It's, you know, it it takes a, it takes a, there's a lot to it. It's not just, you know, one thing, you know, headlines, copy, targeting, uh, uh, web development, you know, social media, knowing, knowing the hashtags, knowing what's trending, you know, there's, there's a skill to it. And, And if you master the skill of marketing, even if you don't have a product of your own or a business of your own, any business will hire a marketer and that marketer can make untold amount of money. I know marketers that are so good. You can't hire them. You can just partner with them. Like they basically will take a piece of your revenue, but they yeah. will make you more than you can make yourself. So marketing is, is the one I would say. Um, but I wouldn't just say marketing. I would say marketing, sales, personal branding, and social media. Learn those four things, dude, and you'll never, ever go hungry. Mm, that's great advice. Write your own ticket. You can live off a laptop. Mm. I call it laptop lifestyle. Like, dude, you can literally do all that shit from Aruba. You can do it from New York City. You can do it while you're camping. You can do it in the country, out of the country. You can do it with COVID, no COVID. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. How, where do you think would be the best resource for people to learn marketing? Well, you'd start with like Google, right? And then, and then, you know, start researching mm. and then start doing, you know, the best way to learn is to do. Right. Um, there, there's all kinds of programs out there. Buy a course. Well, you know, a lot of those courses are ripoffs. Well, you're never going to know if they're a ripoff until you fucking start trying some. So many yeah. people are afraid to spend money on a course. It's unbelievable. You know, I spent probably $10,000 on courses and thought they were all garbage. The next $10,000 made me millions. Mm. You know, my course, I have closer school. I teach sales, closing, and persuasion. My course is, 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 is like the, one of the best ROIs on the planet. Um, my book, it's like 24 bucks, best ROI on the planet. But if you buy it, you don't read it, you don't execute, you don't try to disprove what I'm saying. You just listen to it and run bullshit. Well, then you might think it's the biggest ripoff on the planet. That's mm. again perspective. So right. here's what I, regardless of whose course you buy, go disprove what people are saying. And I think you're going to find yourself in a different situation six months afterwards, because you're going to either you know, disprove six or seven things that you tried, but you'll be interested in disproving people. Mm. You heard about that guy that, that set out to disprove God. And now he's one of like the biggest people. Yeah. I, I actually heard about that. What was he? I forget what he did, but I read that recently. He went and tried to disprove God and ended up finding God. There's a yeah. book. I think it was called a case for Christ or something like that. You know, then yeah, he made were, a lot of money too. Yeah. But again, I mean, to me, disproving like, Hey, you tell me, Hey, Brad, if you go up and say this to this person, you'll, you'll get paid. I'm not going to just go, ah, it's bullshit. If I really am trying to get what you're teaching me to get, I'm going to go do it. 
yeah. I'm going to go do it. And then I'm going to hopefully come back and tell you, Hey, that didn't work. And then, and then hopefully if you're a good teacher or coach or whatever, you're going to say, well, tell me what you said, and, you know, give me the circumstance. Oh, well, that's why you, you said it like this and you were in this setting and, you know, you, you kind of, and then, and then you work with somebody and next thing you know, you, you, you get good at something and yeah. dude, when you're the best in the world at whatever it is, you get paid. Hmm. Nobody can show me the best in the world at something that, that, and they're not paid. So that's, right. that's what I mean. Like, it's so easy. Like go get, go become the best in the world at something and you'll get paid. So mm. people are like, I just want to be rich. Well then become the best in the world at something. I guarantee you'll be rich. Mm. You just have to be the best in the world. Well, that's, that takes time, dude. I didn't say it was overnight. I didn't say it didn't take effort. I didn't say it didn't take work. I said, it's easy to do. It's easy to get abs. Go freaking eat flawlessly and do your exercise and stay hydrated. And six months, a year or two years later, dude, you're going to have abs. You're going to go do that. Wasn't rocket science. You can Google how to get abs. There's a million courses on how to get abs. They all work. The question is, do you? Mm. I love it when people say, hey, have you ever heard about this opportunity or that opportunity? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, does it work? And I'm like, if you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's all perspective again, right? It's How about all... your podcast? How about your podcast? I've told a hundred people start a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, I mean, it's not, you know, dude, podcasts work. Dude, okay. it's the best. It's start changed my podcast. life. Start a podcast. Uh, you, know how many, you know how many people are now asking me to be on my podcast? I could sell, I could sell <laughs> guest spots on my podcast. I got, I got people reaching out that are like, like, dude, these people want on my podcast. What, what was so hard about buying two microphones, talking to people and then <laughs> uploading it to freaking iTunes? Like what's yeah. so, what, that's easy. Yeah. It's a great personal brand accelerator too. I mean, it's the best. But what if people don't listen to it? But what if, yeah. what if, what if, what if, what if, See, it's all these what if. Yeah. Bullshit. You know, when I was a kid, we used to play what if a lot. We'd be walking home, and I, you know, what if this person came up and punched you in the mouth, and then you know, <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd do this and I'd do that, and you know, well, what if this girl came up, you know, showed up at school and wanted to marry you, and you know, what if this girl came over and just started making out with you, and we, that's what, all we do is these what if games, and dude, nothing ever happened that 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 we what ifed about. Like, it, it, yeah, what ifs hardly ever happen if they ever do. Although sometimes that shit does happen. I said one day, what if a bird just shit in my hand and I put out my hand and dude, I swear on everything I love. When I put my hand out, a bird shit <laughs> in my hand. I said, what if a bird just shit in my hand? And as soon as I said that, dude, Bird shit landed right in my hand. Now, now some people are going to think, oh my God, dude, that's gross. No, dude, I thought it was lucky. I tell people I'm lucky all the time. I'm the luck. I'm one of the luckiest dudes you'll ever meet. Like, what are the chances of that ever happening in a yeah. million years? And it happened to me. Like, dude, what if a bird shit in my hand? <laughs> bird shit right in my hand. What'd that tell me? Why am I saying this? Because, dude, anything is possible. But you got to believe that it's possible or it's not. That's how powerful the human mind is, dude. It is so powerful. You can, you can make it not work by just believing that it doesn't. Yeah, so true. So listen, if you're not as lucky to have a bird shit in your hand, you have to have a better plan. Well, your better plan should be master sales, closing, and persuasion. Start with my course. Start with Grant Cardone's course. Start with... Uh, you know, there's books on it. Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, some of the old dogs. Um, but but start. Yeah. Learn and master sales, closing and persuasion. Learn and master marketing. Learn and master how to build a personal brand. And then learn and master social media. Social media will change, but it's not going away. You yeah. know, it went, it went from Instagram. Now, now TikTok's coming up and, you know, TikTok will eventually be old and there'll be something new, but there'll always be this social media game. Yeah. You know, YouTube. Dude, if you don't have a YouTube channel, you are sleeping at the wheel. YouTube yeah. is your own network. Yeah. Anyone can have their own network by starting a YouTube channel. It's great advice. It's great advice, my man. 
Um, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap this up. And it's kind of around the, the craziness that's going on right now. And, you know, the people that are struggling or going through adversity, I would love if you could speak to them as to like, what advice other than like business advice or sales or marketing or anything, if somebody's struggling mentally right now with, you know, the, the landscape of what's happening, what advice do you have for them today to walk away with? Um, if someone's struggling in the landscape, the landscape of the craziness that's going on in the world right now with all the, the shit going on. I'd say, you know, stop being a bitch. Like, dude, there's nothing to be struggling about. Like, dude, there's opportunity everywhere, everywhere. There's opportunity everywhere literally they can shut down America, like Canada, dude, there's opportunity in Canada. I know several Canadians that are making great livings in Canada, in Canada. There's an opportunity to get your ass out of Canada. There's an opportunity to freaking network. There's opportunities everywhere. So if you're struggling right now in this day and age, it's only because you're uncomfortable and you're afraid. So just wake up and just realize, stop being a bitch, dude. There's, there's, there's problems that can be solved on a regular basis and literally Commerce, getting rich, money boils down to one thing, solve problems. If you can solve problems, you can get paid because people buy solutions. They don't buy products and services. They buy solutions. They don't want to buy your bullshit. They want to buy the result that your bullshit gives them. So at the end of the day, man, if in a world like now where there's all these problems, dude, it's, it's, a more, it's the best time ever to get wealthy. You just have to, you just have to wake up, snap out of it and start, you know, focusing on solving problems. It could be any problem. What are you good at? Just look around. If you see a problem, Hey, how do I solve that problem? And all of a sudden you figure out how to solve the problem. Well, guess what? Other people are having the same problem. So now charge them to solve their problem and, and do it for less than you're charging. People come to my house and pick up my dog shit. Why? I don't like touching dog shit. That's a problem for me. So guess what? I pay someone to pick it up. Problem solved. The person that picks it up, they got no problem picking up dog shit. <laughs> it's perspective, right? My perspective, I, I don't like that shit. Their, their perspective it. is fuck, it's money. Okay, good. So come pick up my dog shit and we got a deal. Well, you know what? There's, there's pooper scooper companies out there making millions of dollars. Why? They're solving a problem. Yeah. Well, health problems, skin problems, marketing problems, sales problems. Um, you know, how do you how do you put on a podcast? How do you start a podcast? How do you grow a podcast? That's a problem. There's a lot of people right now. They want to start a podcast, grow a podcast. They want your podcast, but they don't know how. Dude, yeah. Put, put together a step by step guide as to what you did to get your top rated growing podcast, mm -hmm. and then sell that. Now someone has a problem. They don't know what to do. Boom! You just solved their problem. Yeah. And you just generated money. And then guess what you got to do? Market. And now all of a sudden you find millions of people wanting a podcast and, and, and you're the freaking podcast guru. Well, let's say you charge, for example, 300 bucks to teach someone step by step exactly how to build, start, grow and everything, all the equipment, everything they need. 300 bucks. Well, what if a million people bought your $300 course? It's $300 million. You think, you think you'd have a problem after that? No. And by the way, you'd solve a million people's problem. And, and, and from the entrepreneur side of me, I want to throw this in. When you do solve problems, it's called vertical integration. Now anticipate the next problem that they're going to have. So it's like, okay, I sold them how to start a podcast for 300 bucks. Now they're probably going to run into the same shit I did, which is how do I get guests? Okay, well, that's another 300 bucks. And then, well, hey, maybe you just get guests for them. Well, that's another 300 bucks. And then, you know, uh, ongoing equipment change, you know, equipment gets old. Okay, the latest and greatest of equipment exchange programs. Every two years, we'll come in and outfit your studio with the latest and greatest. There's another fucking problem solved. 
So now all of a sudden, dude, you took one problem and you created vertical integration and you solved all the other problems because just because you solve one problem doesn't mean you're not going to have any more. So if I, if I'm, and I'm using podcasts as an example. So if I'm teaching you how to start a podcast, I can anticipate what other problems you're going to have. Mm. And lo and behold, the person that showed you how to start a podcast is also the same person that solves these other problems you're going to face. That's vertical integration. I'm also going to be the same guy that's going to sell you the microphones. Why? Well, because you can go to B and H and try to hunt them down or click the link where now I'm fucking rev sharing or I'm an affiliate uh, of, of, you know, you know, roads road or whatever, you know, form of equipment you buy into. Yeah. Next thing you know, people are offering you a hundred thousand dollars to pitch their microphone and yada, 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 yada. Next thing you know, dude, you're making millions and millions of dollars in a time like this. Because you just simply said, dude, like there is, don't worry about what's going on. Take advantage of what's going on. Yeah. Dude, it's like, look at these home deliveries, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. They fuck, dude, I haven't been to a store in a year and a half. Neither is my wife. Yeah. They solved the problem going to the store. People don't want to go to the store. People don't want to go down to the liquor store. There's, there's alcohol delivery services now. You know, now everybody always wants to think you have to invent shit. You don't have to invent shit, dude. You could get good at sales, marketing, personal branding, and social media and sell somebody else's shit. I know a dude making millions selling an iPhone. They don't own the iPhone. They don't make the iPhone, but they make millions selling someone else's shit. Yeah. Dude, there's no problems in the world, dude. There's only, there's only fear and, and, and stupidity. There you get go. Rid of, get rid of that, dude, and the whole world opens up. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. The one, the only, the real deal, Brad Lee. Lee Lion. 